every so often I will take one of my own little things to bits, and this is something I built a long time ago. And I can't remember what the circuitry is, I can roughly guess what the circuitry is. But the story behind this is that it's when blue LEDs were new and radical. And I had the idea, because the colour was so nice, I had the idea to build them into clothing. And I made this little power pack, which is based on a Molex style connector, a little cluster of three nickel metal hydride cells. I think that's three nickel metal, yes it is three nickel metal hydride cells. And a 470 ohm resistor. And I also built a charger, a very minimalist charger, that was designed to charge these at low current. And you simply plug this onto the charger, and the LEDs would like to uh, show it was charging. It would also have neon indicators, um, as you can see from the picture in the description of this video. And uh, then once it was charged, because it basically just trickle charged it, you could feed this LED, a standard LED. In my case, I originally used, uh, for the size, I used a 3mm LED, um, and you'd fold the leads over, poke it through clothing, and then behind the clothing you'd uh, push it into the little battery connector and it would give you this tiny little pixel of light. And it was so radical at the time. I can remember being in a nightclub with this tiny little blue dot in the middle of the logo in my sweatshirt and people staring at it and then coming up and actually touching the shirt because they couldn't work out what it was, particularly because at that time the blue LEDs were so new and very expensive. So I made a few of these for friends, but not that many because LEDs were kind of expensive at that time. But to deal with the charger, to make it as simple as possible, I decided to go for a very shady design with a resistive dropper. And just because, well, that's what I do, I based it on a standard neon glow plug. And I made various ones in different uh, glow plugs. And the idea was that when you plug this in, it glows orange. And also, I put an excess of LED indicators on just to show the status of, well, I say status of charging. It doesn't show you when it's charged. All it does is it shows you when it's in standby or when a cell's plugged in and it is charging. And so many of these LEDs are just superfluous. So let's uh, open this up and examine my abomination. And we'll see, well, let's doodle the schematic out and see how safe it was. Which, you know, this thing could give you a shock because it was a resistive dropper. Okay. Ooh, it's a bit stiff. Is all the wiring going to pop out? Ooh. Oh, that's quite neat. That's not bad. Um, so we've got the... There's the resistors for the resistive dropper, and I have to say, I've used big ones, much bigger than I was expecting. I thought I was going to use quarter watt, but I guess maybe I used those for the higher voltage rating. And they're rated 47k, yellow, violet, orange, which is 47, and the orange means 3, which means 3 zeros. So 47, 3 zeros, 47k. I think these are rated at least half watt. It was back, uh, maybe they're 1 watt actually. Yeah, they're 1 watt resistors. So the orange glow from this unit uh, is done by three neons. Um, these two neons are in series across the 240 volt supply with a 220k resistor. That's a red, red, yellow, which is uh, two, two, and four zeros. And then, I'm not sure the value of this resistor, it's all sleeved up to keep it safe. And uh, there's just one resistor in series with that knee in there. Possibly 220k again. I did have a tendency to use oversized resistors to limit the current through the LEDs. I'd, I'd rather the glow was slightly unstable than over push the, the neons too far. It actually looks fairly safe. There's nothing really too cluttered, and apart from the vicinity of the... Yeah, even these connections, it's not that. It's got fairly modest air gap. Okay. And the circuitry is all potted under resin completely in here. Just basically two-part resin that has then been gunked in. Right, let's draw this out. Let's bring the notepad in and a doodle and see what abomination I created. So it starts off with the mains come in. Uh, let's call that live, let's call that neutral. And aside from the fact it's got the resistors feeding the bridge rectifier, I put a resistor on each leg, just as a precaution, uh, just in case of a, there was a polarity reversal uh, issue. It means that the resistor value is half what it could have been if, that, if it was a guaranteed um, I suppose, technically speaking, it would have been very naughty. 
I could have caused a one milliamp leakage to ground by just actually referencing between live and earth, but that would be very taboo. And also there's some plastic earth pins. That kind of screws that up. So 47K. 47K. So the best part about 100K. Um, right. Which would have limited the current down to about 2.4 milliamps. Or if you bridged from one of these... Uh, if if you actually touched one of these pins um, and were referenced well to ground with wet hands and you passed it, the full current, it would be about 5 milliamps. Which wouldn't be life-threatening, but it would certainly annoy you. It would kind of spoil the moment for you. It would be quite painful. Scary, but non-life-threatening. So there's a lazy bridge rectifier. I could draw all the diodes, but I'm not going to draw all the diodes. It takes a bit of time and it looks more cluttered. But that's a standard mains voltage round bridge rectifier in there. The neons, uh, I had two neons with one common resistor in the middle. So there's the neon indicators. Um, and that resistor was 220K. And then there was another neon going from the live pin Uh, with just one resistor going to the neutral pin, and I'm not sure what that was. Let's just make a rash assumption and say it's 470k. Which it could have been. That's the sort of resistor I'd have used round about that time. The output of the bridge rectifier then goes to the charging circuitry. Let's uh, doodle this down. So the first thing it does is goes through a completely pointless LED that just lights up, and it's basically power. Oh, and uh, the other end also does exactly the same thing. So there were two completely pointless power LEDs that just lit up for no good reason at all, other than because I wanted to cram in as many LEDs as possible. And, you know, that's quite a noble thing to do, really. The circuitry itself is going, it splits. It, uh, in, there are two sections in series here. One is going through an LED, and this is the charge LED, and then it goes to the pins of the um, socket, well, the plug actually sticking out the front, so that would be plus and that would be minus. And the other section of the circuitry there is a zener, probably about 12 volts, I'm guessing, maybe lower. Um, it would be 6, 7, 8, yeah, probably about 10 to 12 volts. Uh, a zener, and then just another LED in series with that to show standby. Now, what actually happened here, uh, I appear to have two sections. I'll, I'll finish drawing these, and then we'll just uh, talk over what's happening in each section. So there's the other charge LED, because for some reason I put two sockets in this one. Most of them just had uh, one socket, and most of them just had the two LEDs. And to be honest, no LEDs were needed at all. But uh, I just added lots of LEDs. As I say, for no good reason at all. Other than it looked quite nice. Plus, minus, so two identical sections of circuitry. And then going back. Radio. So here's what happens. If you plug it in and... Uh, no, no battery pack is plugged in, the current will flow through this LED... And then, because this is open circuit here, the voltage will rise quite high, so that zener will conduct and that LED will light. And then, if, for instance, there was a battery in this one, uh, the combined voltage of the battery in series this LED would uh, be lower than the zener voltage, so the current in that case would flow through the charging light and then through the uh, charge the battery and then back through this LED to the negative. Now, these are nickel metal hydride cells and you, you don't need any special protective circuitry. In fact, the battery pack was literally just the socket. And the reason I put the socket in the battery pack was simply so you could plug the LEDs into that. Actually, I shall plug the LED in. It looks quite nice. Lit up. Um, so this uh, battery pack was simply, if that was the plus and the minus, it was simply a resistor. 470 ohms in series with three cells. Tiny little nickel metal hydride cells rated about 10 milliampere each. 
Um, so I'll just write nickel metal hydride. And that 10 milliamp hour isn't a lot, but with the 472 ohm resistor, the LED just barely glowed, and it creates this super psychedelic, just dull dot of light. Um, so that's the circuitry. It's, I have to say, it's not bad. It's not unsafe. It would give you a zing if you touched the pins, but it wouldn't kill you. That's probably a good result. I did uh, make a few of these for friends and warned them. I told them, this is the circuitry that's inside. Don't touch it while it's... Uh, don't touch the pins while it's plugged in. And uh, yeah, well, that's when you could do things like that, of course, now, nowadays with eBay in China. All products do that. But yeah, that's super simple. Um, and I drilled uh, a hole in one of my hard hats, which completely violates the integrity of the hard hat. And I put the little 3mm blue LED in the front of the hard hat and had the little battery pack behind it, which means that if I'd received a huge cranial impact, it would either the hard hat would have split in the vicinity of the LED and fractured my skull or something like that, or this battery pack would have been pushed right through my brain. Nice. Um... So, yeah, this is psychedelic. I kind of like this. I think I might almost be tempted to make some more of these now. That's good. So, would I recommend making this? Well, if you know what you're doing, and you know that you're going to use suitable resistors and have su suitable isolation, then perhaps yes. But these days... Well, USB chargers didn't exist back then. These days, I would seriously consider just a resistor and a USB charger, and that would make a safe little adapter for charging these cells a very low current. Yeah. So um, that's about all there is to say about it. It's, it's quite a neat thing, not particularly safe, but looked visually good at the time. So um, yeah, one of my dodgier but more pleasing projects. Oh, I'll just push that. Oh, actually, now I can see that in the screen. I might just push that up where you can actually see the whole circuitry. But there you go. Neat stuff. And just for completeness, here it is, plugged into a socket. Turn it on and it glows neon orange. And one of the batteries is charged at the moment. Um, but when I unplug it, you'll see the light underneath it changes from the right-hand LED to the left-hand LED. And when I short these out to emulate a battery being in position, you'll see this sort of LED change over. As I say, completely pointless, other than the fact I thought it looked quite nice. <laughs>